I want to talk about painting what you see, which has its advantages, but also some disadvantages as well. And in this video, hopefully I can help you level up to being able to go beyond simply capturing what you see, but really painting with a full understanding, thinking in terms of three dimensions. Thank you, Ronnie, for submitting this painting for a critique that we can all learn and benefit from. And this is a very realistic painting. Its values, edges, colors are all very carefully handled great control and you're able to look at the photograph that you have and you're able to kind of see through the illusion. For example, you're able to see this black sweatshirt and see that it's not just made up of black. You can see these shifts in value. Even though it's a black sweatshirt, there are shades on this that are not black. And that's what tells me that you can see through the illusion is that you're not trying to paint a black sweatshirt. You're just putting down the shades that make it look like a black sweatshirt. And that's really what painting what you see is all about. Rather than being bought into the idea that this is a man in a black sweatshirt looking over a city, that it's just a collection of values, edges, and color. And you can find those values, edges, and color and put them in your own painting. But the problem with painting what you see is that it threatens your occupation as an artist in that you want to go beyond what the photograph is offering. You don't want to be just a copying machine. You want to use the photograph as a launch pad into something greater. And that's where it's not enough to just paint what you see, but to actually go beyond that to envision a three-dimensional space and build it yourself. And I can tell that you're struggling to think three-dimensionally when I look at edges like this one right in here. This edge, which is a little bit sharp, should actually be soft and graded. And so it's little things like that, that even without looking at the photograph, just from looking at this painting alone, I can tell that this needs to be soft, this side needs to be a little bit softer, this side needs to be a little bit softer, whereas these edges on the other side can be sharper. So we're going to get into that in this video. So the first step is to simplify this down into light and shadow because the light is really what determines the impression of three dimensions. And what I'm going to do is block in the shadows here. And so if you want to skip ahead, you may, but it might be worth you seeing how this is done and how I'm thinking about this as I'm going. I'm just going to start working over this. Now I'm not just working on top, uh, like I'm not just thinking to copy what's under the painting. I'm actually looking over at the reference image. And not only am I doing that, that might be the aspect of painting what I'm seeing, but I'm also thinking three dimensionally about like the skull underneath the hood here. And as I think about that skull, I might, you know, I might be tempted to say that it goes like this, but in thinking about a head, I think it would actually kind of bend, bend a little bit more like, like that. So I'm going to put that in there and just drop this in, looking over to the reference for confirmation. Seems like there's kind of a, a dip in the hood there. So the left side pops out a little bit more. So I'm trying to think three dimensionally about this as I'm going. Seems like there's a kind of a little bit right in there. But again, I'm just thinking like how, like what would a head look like underneath all this? Does the head explain the, the contour of the hood? And I think I may have put in a little too much shadow. I think actually in here, I can barely make out. There's a little bit of light kind of in there. So I'll leave it more, more like that and then keep coming down through here. It's getting, just seeing the smallest bit of light on the side here. This is gonna come and kind of get into that little crease there. And I can just barely make out, yeah, so maybe something a little bit more like that and like this. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm really managing the edge between light and shadow. I can always fill this in to see it a little bit more easily, 
but a lot of my attention and focus is going into right where the light and shadow meet. Now, how am I able to figure this out? Am I just copying what I see as being dark? No, not exactly. So the light here, if we think about the light shining on the reference image, is really coming from the side and it's bouncing off of the, the planes of his face or of his, of his body that are facing that light. So that's how I'm thinking about this. And I'm asking myself the question, is, is the light touching this area? Like on his shoulder, it's all pretty dark up here. Like I could do that, but I actually think as if I look really closely, I can see a little bit of a value change in there. And so I think that there's actually could be a little bit of light in that space. So I'm going to leave that. It can be really dark. It's a, it's a, um, but it's, but the light is still touching it. So there's a difference between shadow and darkness, a big, big distinction. I do want to keep all of my lights brighter than my shadows. So I think in terms of bright and dark and then light and shadow, I think of them as two different things. So just coming up in here. I don't know if it extends fully that far, the shadow. Again, I'm putting in the shadow, not what I perceive as just being dark. And I'm always looking to the reference for confirmation about these things that's helping guide me. And let's see, this sleeve seems to take a turn. There's a shadow in here. Small shadow. And then on this side of things, I think that's that's good. That's where it's dropping off again. Shadow comes back in over here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Get inside this little nook in here. It's a little bit, it, with all these extra folds, it becomes harder and harder to envision what the arms might be doing. But it does look like Right here, it, it looks like his hand is going into his pocket or his hoodie or something. So, and there's just the smallest amount of light on the side there. And there's a little triangle. I'm gonna get the eraser out, just open this up a little bit more. Kind of a little triangle around there of where his arm is stuffing into his pocket. And then the rest of this I can fill. The light can't reach over here. There are some uh, variations in value, but the primary light source can't touch this area. So I'm treating it all like a shadow. So just by blocking in these shadows, I've created a nice representation of the three dimensions that are going on. And I now want to take you over to the colors that I've mixed for this palette. So you can break this down into light and shadow. So here, this is my only shadow value that I really need for this whole um, painting. There's going to be a few more values at the very end. And then I have these four for my lights. And what I'll do next is take this value right here, and I'm going to drop it in on top of my shadows. Or in this case, for digital, I'm putting it underneath actually. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And this is not exactly what you would do traditionally either. This is just what's working for me in, in showing this where I can just kind of block in this value without harming the shapes that I've already established with the that, that other layer where I was establishing what's a light and what's a shadow. But the idea of starting with a value that is my darkest light is that it's really close to the shadows in value and in color. And so that's gonna allow me to make really smooth gradients because the values aren't gonna to have to jump too far to create a gradient. And then I can build up more lights on top of it. So we have that here. And I'm actually going to now switch over to this other layer that I did earlier. It's a little bit more refined and thought through. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this for the next stage. 
So now that I have those two layers blocked in, I now want to soften my edges in the right areas. So I'm going to grab the smudging tool. This is, again, just digital know-how. You would have to build your gradients out differently than what I'm doing here. But I want to soften the edges that are form shadows. And I'm going to make a video explaining cast and form shadows specifically. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of talk about them briefly. Form shadows are where the, the, the shapes are kind of um, turning away and rolling away from the light. And so the light is not able to wrap around and touch the other side of them as they're rolling. And so that creates a gradient because the lights are dropping off. But after that form shadow, that form shadow actually casts a, a shadow, which creates a cast shadow. And so right here, we have a sharp edge and a soft edge. That sharp edge is representing the cast shadow. And you can see how the relationship between the both of them are actually what is creating a really strong sense of dimensions. So the edge on the shape I'm working on now, the top of that is going to be sharp. Underneath it, this edge in here, I'm softening. And then the edge underneath that one is going to stay sharp. On the right side here, all of this is going to get blurry because this is a form shadow. All of this will simplify into just a form shadow. And then the bottom of this next shape is going to be soft. So in some ways, what I'm doing is figuring out, it's as simple as just figuring out what is a form shadow and what's a cast shadow. And, but on the other hand, in order to find that out, I have to think about this painting from a three-dimensional lens. I have no choice but to figure out and determine whether, you know, whether one thing, like how the light is interacting with it. And if I can figure out how the light is interacting with something, then I'm well on my way to creating a very three-dimensional painting because the light travels in straight lines for the most part, you know, to our eyes. And so they can't wrap around things. And so they'll hit one thing and then they'll, they'll be a shadow. They'll, they'll, they won't be able to touch other things. And that kind of information is essential for our brain to be able to make sense of things and, and um, process and to say, okay, this thing has form and it's, you know, these dimensions and things like that. So that's where all this is really important that we're actually helping our brain, helping viewers buy into the illusion that all of this is real. And you can see there's kind of a, a pattern here. I'm not even using the photo reference at this point. I'm thinking three dimensionally and asking myself, what is a form of cast shadow? And actually this reference image is made by AI. So they might not have the best assessments of how to create the impression of three dimensions. They create the illusion of three dimensions just by you know aggregating a whole bunch of things online which is pretty powerful, but they don't really have an understanding. And I'm trying to approach this with an understanding to show you the impact that it has. Hopefully we can make something that looks a little bit more impactful than what the AI did. It won't be as detailed, but you'll see the underpinnings will be just as strong. So just softening this, you can see the relationship form shadow cast shadow. Every time there's a form shadow, it's going to create a cast shadow. So it's just a matter of knowing where that cast shadow is going to fall. And that happens by being aware of what is, like thinking about like, what is the light doing? The light's coming from the left side, shining on the sweatshirt. And how is it interacting with these different folds? Each one of these places where there's light, it's either a plane that's facing upwards or it's a plane that's facing towards the left. That's all information for me that I can use to build out this impression of three dimensions. Okay, so I finally softened that little section down in there. And now as I zoom out, you can see it's subtle. The values are pretty dark, but that's a pretty three dimensional looking sweatshirt. And look at how similar in value those two colors are. And yet I've been able to create the impression of three dimensions. So it's not to say like contrast is not the answer. Structure is the answer. Process is the answer. And thinking three dimensions will take you a long way. And um, as you have a process that builds three dimensions into it. Okay, so 
I will now skip ahead to a more refined version of that and then, and maybe it's not, I'm not even sure, but I kind of did some work earlier. And now at this point, I'm going to go back to that original layer we had and turn down, turn the opacity back up. And now I'm ready to, let me see, I'm gonna just, just to be safe, I'm gonna duplicate that layer so I can keep working safely without any changes. Again, perks of digital. And so now I'm gonna use these to build this up. At this point, I'm gonna change my brush to something that's more pressure sensitive, which is this round brush here. I'm going to stay a little bit at a distance just so that I can see the reference and see what's going on. So I'm starting with this first darker value here and I'll build my way up to the brighter values. And so if I plan on putting a brighter value down, then I want to put this my second darkest light in that spot as well. I wanna be able to create an impression of these gradients, but also with color, like there's a, a brown, like there's a warmth that I'm bringing into this, um, which Ronnie, I noticed that you, you may have intentionally decided not to go with this more of a brown color, which is totally fine. That's um, a decision that doesn't really harm the three-dimensional aspects of the painting. Um, so, but I'm just, I'm gonna be kind of following the, the reference here a little bit more closely. But whether you chose, like you chose in your painting, I'll just kind of pause this for a moment. You can see in here, your sweatshirt is a little bit more blue and it's light, and the photograph has something more brown. So what we can think about that in thinking three dimensions again is that there's an incandescent street light, like a yellow street light, that is shining on the sweatshirt in the AI reference photo. And in your painting, you decided to have it more of a fluorescent light, more of a blue light that's shining on the sweatshirt. It doesn't really make a difference. You were consistent to keep it all blue. And so it's absolutely fine. So returning to my work over here. And I'm being pretty sloppy as I work on this and you're probably not even seeing that many changes going on. I'm just building it up slowly. Some of the values are changing. And just in the interest of time, I'm kind of maybe moving a little bit more quickly than I should. I'm gonna just bring a little bit more brown into the shoulder in here. It's very, very subtle. And I want it to stay subtle. I want it to stay dark. I think it, it makes sense that it would stay dark. It wouldn't be catching that much light. Then we have this fold in here, which is gonna get a highlight eventually. So bringing some of that darker brown in there. You know, it's funny, sometimes when I'm doing this, I'm just thinking like, this would be so much easier in traditional oil paint, but that's just what I'm comfortable with. But this is so much easier to kind of undo things and quickly um, you know, make adjustments to things that really hopefully helps people see the impact of a decision. And that's, you know, there's so much that goes into decision making when, when you're painting and it's very, you know, it's just really, really important. So I'm kind of just softening out, trying to soften out more of a gradient in there if I can. Trying to maintain, the, the brush that I'm using is not friendly with soft edges. It's trying to create all these um, sharper edges. The, it's the pressure sensitivity that I like about doing it in this way. There's probably a better brush out there, um, but I'm just not experienced enough, so I apologize. So now we have that slight tint of brown coming in. Then I'll move on to my next layer. I'm gonna be focusing more on the highlights of things. 
trying to fade it out as best I can though. It's going to be, like I said before, just a little bit sloppy. Again, always being conscious about keeping my gradients intact. I'm feeling this painting kind of pulling me in. I gotta remind myself that I'm trying to teach something here. So I'm starting to feel like I've lost a little bit of the crispness of the edges that I had before, which is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna see if I can, I might have to go back in with that smudging tool just to knock that back a little bit more. And then finally for my very last value, I'm just gonna try to do a small, this might be too much side of the hood. So, not my best work. I think we'll see, how did I do on my other one that I did? So, okay, I think that's a little bit better. So we'll just, we'll stick with this one um, when I had a little bit more time to work on that. And it's a little bit darker, doesn't have quite as bright um, highlights as what's in the photograph, but that's okay. And maybe, I don't know, if I dare, I, I'll, uh, I'll try to strengthen that a little bit more. It could be that even the size of my brush is just needed to be a little bit smaller. But again, hopefully you're, you're getting the idea of the process. That's what's going to matter more here, as opposed to anything else. Going to kind of strengthen some, some edges I know that should be sharp here. Okay, and then now let's grab that smudging tool and see if I can make any improvements. So I'm just, again, softening the edges that I know need to stay soft, and then I can leave the other sides sharper. something like that. There's there's a thickness, there's a weight to the sweatshirt now that I think was lacking before. And it just happened naturally as I was building this painting up based on the light and shadow. But let's do a quick comparison between what I've done so far and the original painting. It's all very subtle. The decisions are minuscule, but it's the just the accumulation of a bunch of decisions that were thoughtfully made 
in trying to create the impression of three dimensions that we were able to achieve a greater sense of structure. You can almost like feel that, that right shoulder with that little bit of light on the top of it. You can feel the weight, the heftiness of the sweatshirt now. In this one, it feels a little bit thin. Bringing the palette back up again, we had another value right in here. This is really hard to see, but it's actually a kind of a green, greenish color. And I found it inside of the shadow of the jacket. And so I'm going to, again, duplicate this layer and work on top of this. I'm gonna see, so if you look inside this, the shadow of the sweatshirt carefully, I'm, oh, it looks like I need to increase the size of my brush maybe. Just gonna be working in here. And I can almost just be really ambiguous and nondescript, but just putting a little bit of this blue very gently into the back of this is creating a nice contrast and it's actually reinforcing even more the sense of light coming from the other side. And I could even push this further than what the, um, the photo reference is asking for. I'm kind of just scrubbing around. It's very, very subtle. And maybe there'd be a little bit coming off of the sweatshirt in some areas. I'm not gonna get into too much detail there. Um, and I can't even really see much of a change on my screen. But it is, it is in there and um, it's just adding a little bit more. So again, if I can kind of just toggle that on and off, you might be able to see the subtle difference that it makes and how that subtle light is now creating some impression and really it's your brain that's doing the rest of the work is saying, oh, there's something in there. And so it's kind of just changing the form a little bit. It helps you imagine um, his back a little bit more, things like that. So that's really the power of thinking in three dimensions. And I think a big takeaway here is that it is still necessary to be able to paint what you see. You still have to look at the photograph and simplify it for its values, edges, and color. Like the photograph is 2D, your painting is 2D, you're taking 2D from 2D. But you need to think about the end goal, which is to recreate the illusion of 3D. And that is an essential part of this kind of, the wrestle of painting is that while you are, if you're using a photo reference, you're converting 2D to 2D, but you wanna take it to a, an illusion of 3D. And so that's why it's important to still be thinking in three dimensions so that you can really powerfully convey that effect. And one more thing um, on this idea of three dimensions is also to just think about the sense of depth. And so if you look off in the photograph, you can there's a kind of a softness to the photo in the background that this painting doesn't have. And that could just come out to style. Maybe uh, Ronnie, you intentionally chose to have some a little bit more of a, some painterly strokes. But if we just think objectively that like how, how can we push the background further back? What would, what would it look like? And so I'll just take the time to show that. Again, it might not actually make the painting better um, or be what you want, but we can push it back further and I, can, and I can at least show you that just subjectively. So over here, I'm gonna turn on this little toggle and you can look at the painting closely and tell me if you see in the background, the background softened just a little bit. It didn't need to soften much but it just took some of the sting out of some of those sharp edges from the lens flare. Like our eyes don't really see lens flares in that kind of sharp way that cameras can. And so by softening that just a little bit, it really helps put the focus on the sweatshirt there. And I could even turn this up to an even bigger extreme. And you can see the depth that it creates. It's not necessarily more visually pleasing, honestly, but it does push it further back. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. And so it is, you know, it's powerful to be able to uh, make very soft gradients. I think that's one of the elements in here that I've done in, in working on top of this digitally is creating some softer gradients that are a little bit less scratchy, 
Um, you can see in the background here, these gradients seem to blend together a little bit more easily. And of course, I'm cheating with digital paint here, but um, that does just show the power of having a nice soft gradient and what that can do for you. You also mentioned that you're struggling with blending, and I made a video on that recently, but I do wanna just comment on that here. It seems to me that you are jumping um, too quickly between your values and colors in trying to make these gradients. You can see how nice and soft those gradients are, and I think that you're just not mixing enough admixtures in between to properly get those gradients in. You're achieving the illusion of gradients through some kind of broken edges. Looks like some paint's kind of working on top of itself. Maybe you're working even a little wet on dry. I'm not sure, but I would really encourage you to check out that video and mix admixtures to just bridge the gap so that you have softer gradients. So in summary, it's kind of interesting how in our journey as artists learning how to see, we have to first break through the illusion, right? Most people that I talk to are struggling to perceive that a black sweatshirt would be made up of a bunch of different values that are not black, right? And you saw through that, you have that locked down. And once you can get there where you're seeing things for values, edges and colors and getting to appreciate the whole world in a different way, well, then you have to take it to another level, which is to see things in three dimensions again, you know? Like you started off, seeing things in 3D, you could look at something and say, oh, well, that sweatshirt is black, no big deal. And now you're thinking, well, I'm not so sure that that sweatshirt is black. And now you have to make sure that the sweatshirt still looks black, even though you know that it's not. That's kind of what's happening. And so you go from 3D to 2D and then back to 3D again, and you're as you gain experience and you have mastery over your skill, you'll be able to manage both of them, both knowing what to do in the 2D realm and how to think in the 3D realm to create the illusion of three dimensions. And so it's a fun journey and you are well on your way to getting there. And this is my encouragement to you. It's like, you're doing great, keep going. You've already got that first stage down. You can see things for value, edge, and color. You can see through the illusion. We'll now start to envision the three dimensions of the world that you want to create. And um, it's a fun thing, you know? And there's just like, as you get into that realm, it's, it kind of breaks your brain a little bit, but it's, it's fun. And you'll be able to do things that you didn't think were possible before. And you'll start to look at back at your previous work, like, wow, like, like I could have made this so much better knowing what I know now, having understanding, knowing how to turn a form or give something shape and mass or create depth with something. And it's fun and um, I'm excited for you. And I think you're again, just off to a really fantastic start. And thank you again for sharing this very nice painting with all of us for us to learn from and grow from. And so I hope that you found this very constructive and encouraging as well. So take care and happy painting.